What's up guys? This is Anything Garage. I'm Jaime and welcome to today's episode. Grom Clone x Vader 125. Today I go through all the things I think you should do before you start riding this puppy to make it reliable. Hope you guys like the episode. It's a little bit long but should help you guys out a lot. Looking sweet. What's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, so I pulled the trigger on this. It is a Honda Grom clone. This is a Vader 125 um, X-Pro. Boom Vader or the Bear Fuerza. It's the same thing. It's the same bike. Same uh, BD 125-10. Same model. But we're going to modify this. So I'm not even going to use it stock. I'm actually going to modify it. I don't care how how it runs stock plenty of videos on that I'm just gonna modify mine and run it that way and there's a couple of things you got to do to this motorcycle to make them run reliable and make them run better and I will go through that and I will also share with you guys all the part numbers and links to what all, all these parts are because a lot of people you know they'll show you half the parts they use they won't show links they'll say what it is but won't you know so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to help you guys out. And there's a few things you got to do to make these reliable. And it's pretty easy stuff. First thing you should do that is very recommended is change the front and rear bearings to all balls bearings. Change the front and rear axles to uh, OEM Honda. And I'll get the part numbers for you guys. Axle bolts. And you also change the cush drive uh, on the hub of the rear wheel because the stock ones suck. Probably last you 500 miles. You change that to OEM Honda ones part numbers you also change the lower and top motor mounts on these I'm going to be using 3 8 grade 8 bolts and it is recommended I'm gonna do it put a lower engine mount on this I will never have to deal with motor mounts or any vibrations at all it will eliminate all vibrations on this now performance wise you have to get rid of this janky piece of crap tiny little carburetor and also getting rid of the air box that it has so you get rid of the air box you get rid of the carburetor and get rid of this EGR PVC emissions stuff all of this doesn't need it we're gonna get rid of all that get a better you know exhaust system on this it'll probably save you weight too fork oil change that change fork oil to actually better fork oil because the fork oil on this sucks it's not even oil it's like gooey i'm also going to change the rear shock only because i want to do that you don't have to but i'm changing the rear shock whoops this one might be all right for you but i'm going to change that so i have all the parts i'm going to share with you what i'm going to use and it's going to be pretty sick all right here are all the throttle parts that I'm going to be using for this motorcycle. It is a Nibi. Everything here is Nibi. We're going to change the original, you know, throttle to a Nibi one. The handle grips are also Nibi and these feel great by the way. They're really good. I like them a lot. Even the throttle cable is red. The Nibi throttle cable to fit the Nibi carburetor. This is not Nibi. It is just a adapter, 26 millimeter and a manifold. And this is a Nibi foam air filter, which looks pretty cool for a foam air filter. And here's an important part. The Nibi carburetor. This is a 22. Turn it around. It's a 22. Uh, I wouldn't go 24 or 26. You know, it doesn't need that. This is a 125. It doesn't need a 26. But here's what I'm going to tell you. A lot of people don't know. Nibi sells two versions of carburetors. Around here and flanged right here which will connect directly into your manifold a lot of people don't know that they buy the round and round version of it and then use a rubber adapter to put it on and the rubber rubber adapter you know isn't very good leaks ribs tears i'll show you the part number for the flange version of these nibi carburetors or you could just go to the nibi store on amazon you'll see them you got to change the throttle body uh, i'm sorry the throttle cable because 
The stock throttle cable will not fit these carburetors. Just for a heads up. Here we have a fender eliminator kit to get rid of that huge ugly rear fender for the license plate. This is going to be a lot better. It also comes with the light for your license plate. So we're going to be doing that as well. Some modifying, some trimming of the, you know, metal here for the rear light might be needed. We'll see. Although some people might be fine with the original chain. I don't want to deal with stretching and all that three, four times, five times until it goes. I'm just going to use a Pro Taper. 428, by the way, not 420. We're also adding a 17 tooth 428. So this is going to be a lot better. It'll probably stretch just once. And that's it. Good to go. I got aluminum brake and clutch levers. These are adjustable from one to six. So they can be closer or farther. And they just look better and feel better than the stock ones. So the reason why I don't have my brake lever on, it's just kind of hanging here. It's because I'm not gonna be using this handlebar. All I did is tighten it so I can remove it from the pallet that it came in. But I'm gonna get rid of this handlebar and we're gonna be using Pro Taper. I'm going to be using this oil, Valvoline 1040 four stroke oil. This is not full synthetic and accordingly this is what you should be running and not full synthetic. But I've also heard good reviews on full synthetic, but I'm just gonna run this because it is what is recommended for these types of engines. I've heard a lot of good reviews on this brand and this oil. So I will be using, it uses 800 milliliters, not 946. Do not use the oil that comes shipped in your motorcycle. You should not use that, not even to break it in. Get rid of it right away. NGK copper spark plug. That's the part number. This is the exhaust that we are gonna be using. It is two separate pieces, two separate orders. The header, two piece, and then the muffler. And then you also need crush gaskets. This is the sh rear shock that I'm using, YSS, uh, with the reservoir. This is for a Honda Grom. It will fit the Vaders as well. Here it is out of the box. I think it looks really good. I like it a lot. Here I have the front and rear axle bolts, the cush drives, and the bearings front and back for the motorcycle. Here are the part numbers. This one's for the front, and this one's for the rear. It's hard to see, but it's 42301 K26900. The cush drive is that, and these are the bearings, all balls. These are the rear for the rear. And this is the front. And those are the part numbers. I will put them on the description as well. I will not install this yet. I'm gonna do the break-in oil change first and then I'm gonna run the second oil change. Uh, after that, which is gonna probably be around 1,000 miles, I will change all of this. But for now, this is what you would need. Okay, I will now start to modify this thing. I'm not gonna show a how-to for every single thing that I'm going to do because this video would be extremely long, but I will show you guys me doing it. Maybe I'll save you guys some money, but when you get your motorcycle, charge this battery. It's not that it's bad. It's just that it lost its charge because it's been sitting in a warehouse in China somewhere for a long time. Just like any car battery. Doesn't mean, you know, if it doesn't start, does doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Just charge it. If you don't have a charger, go to Walmart, buy a 3 amp battery charger from Evercraft or whatever it's called, Never never Start. It's only like $25, $30. Trust me. And then if it doesn't work, then change it. That battery charger, by the way, comes in handy in the future, so it's worth having for sure. Here's the one that I have, by the way. It's a Never Start. Uh, you get this at Walmart, probably $30. Tuck the fairings off. There they are. Um, in hopes of maybe you guys can see all of this easier. This is the air box we're gonna get rid of. It does not need this. It restricts it really badly, makes it run bad. We're gonna get rid of all this. This too, all of this, all of this, getting rid of it. This, you can buy a plate for it. I'm not gonna buy a plate for it. I'm just gonna crimp it, weld it. That's a EGR. All these hoses go back into the carburetor and all of this stuff. Getting rid of it, doesn't need it.
There's a hose here and a hose here disconnected from that side. Just unclamp it. This is, um, it's gonna spit out oil, so you could just tie it somewhere down, not on your tire, you know, somewhere, route it somewhere, because it's gonna spew out oil at higher revolutions. Or you could do, do an oil catch can. Here's our carburetor. Get rid of that right away. The only cool thing about this carburetor is that it comes with a choke for your, you know, when you're starting it off. Um, but we don't we don't really need that. I'm gonna get rid of that and Since I'm gonna use a whole new system here from Nibi. I'm going to get rid of this whole thing for the throttle Which is this cable here Now we are removing the handlebars, so I'm gonna work on taking off the rest. Here's your choke. No longer be using that. So we can get rid of this. Just remove these four bolts and stick that new one in there. There it is. Not torqued down because I'm going to, you know, sit on it and check how I like it but let's put the rest of the stuff on there easy peasy now all I gotta do is the other side now on this side I'm going to be installing a different carburetor that needs a longer uh, throttle cable uh, and it's all gonna be navy so you gotta take off the manifold as well so let's get rid of that here's our small little tiny I think it's an 18 millimeter manifold um, we're gonna do this bigger one, less restrictive, more fuel, more air. Um, does, this is a 26 millimeter. Doesn't mean the carburetor is 26 millimeter, just this is 26 millimeter. This is more or less how this side is gonna look. All I have to do is put the throttle cable in here, the hand grip, put the carburetor on, and then tighten everything up. Now, before doing all that, since I'm going to change these motor mounts this one and the lower one i'm going to take off the exhaust and then we're going to put our new exhaust on later but for now i'm just going to do that to make it easier for myself since i'm doing this all at the same time then we'll come back to the carb and the exhaust later and then up here exhaust is fairly easy it's just 10 mil two of these uh 10 mil here down here and then it should come off That was not right. That was That was smell. This thing's kind of heavy, too. Our uh, battery. It's fully charged. It's been on there for quite a minute. This is that charger I was telling you about. Mine's a 4 amp though. 3 amp, 4 amp, it's fine. Just don't get battery tender. It's a good brand. It's super expensive and it's not even 1 amp. Now to drop the motor, 
All you gotta do is disconnect the terminal for the starter and two wires, this one and this one. So take that zip tie off, this one and that one, and uh, take your sprocket, you know, your chain off. On the other side, you take one ground off, which is that one, and your whole motor drops. Nothing else is connected to it, except the clutch. You might wanna take that off too. All right, like I said, cut the zip tie off. Here it is. Zip tie it later. And take the two wires that are coming from your engine, these. Disconnect them. I might have pointed at the wrong one earlier, but you get the point. And this one right here, don't worry about it. Take it off of your starter. That's just a little bolt. Actually, instead of taking it off from there, because that nut is really hard to get to, you, I might strip it. So, cover it back up. Go around, follow this wire. Disconnect it from here. Just this nut, 10 millimeters. And remember where it goes. Remember, don't have your battery connected. And then move it to the side. Bring it back when you're done. Now your shifter, actuator thing, um, all you gotta do is, uh, would I do this? Fill it up and over. Whew, it's gonna take me a minute. Since I have to drop the motor, you have to remove the chain and I'm gonna change this chain anyway to a Pro Taper Gold 428, um, a lot stronger. I'm gonna take this off. Well, I already did. It's just four bolts here, 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 and here. Okay, so we just got this bike, and this chain is extremely tight. That's not good. That is extremely tight, so make sure if you're not going to change the chain, make sure you tension it accordingly. Ring arm bolt right here is all huge. Look <laughs> how long this thing is. It's like this long. It literally is. Like. That's a long ass freaking bolt, swing arm bolt. Okay, you wanna remove this because we're gonna change the front sprocket to a 17 tooth sprocket, get more top speed out of it. And also to be able to reach the lower bolt. Okay, just move this rubber piece off. And there's your motor mount. Lower. Okay, let's get to work. I'm gonna be removing this linkage type shifter mechanism and we're just gonna put literally a shifter, not this one, but a KLX 110 or pit bike for these SSRs or whatever 125 engines. We're gonna put a shifter on the shaft. We're gonna get rid of this. This can give you trouble, give you false neutral, you know, give you a hard time shifting. We're gonna get rid of this. So eight millimeter bolt here. And then there's a snap ring right here in there that you gotta take off and it should come right off okay take the snap ring off we gotta use a snap ring plier and you use the ones that are angled pliers. like this pliers whatever put it in here like this into the little holes take it out here it is it should come right off like this Don't trust this system, guys. It is not good. Just get yourself a KLX 110 shifter or whatever, bring it in over here, and you got yourself a good, accurate shifter. For now, I'm just gonna use the one that was on my pit bike. Okay, now we can drop the engine, and then we'll drill on the frame, the engine mount, 3 8 3 8 drill bit, and then on the engine itself, 3 8 with the 3 8 drill bit. And then we'll put the 3 8 grade 8 bolts. We should be done. Okay, we just took the engine off. Uh, let's look at the original bolts that came with this. Check this out. See that? Here's the lower one. That is not good. 
That is very like it. So, we're gonna do 3 8 bolts. Here's our 3 8 drill bit. We're gonna drill here, here, the ears on the upper and lower, and then throw in some 3 8 bolts, and we should be gold. Okay, let's check the bolts now that we drilled the holes. That's Solid. perfect right there. Yeah. How it should have been in the beginning. Other side. To get the lower motor mounts, I had to remove this nut to, and then another one down here. To move this out of the way, and then I had to remove this whole swing arm bolt from that way, that side as well. Drop the swing arm a little bit so I can get this and that side with the drill bit. And just like that, our engine is back on. I did have an extra set of hands to take the motor out, um, get the swing arm off, and replace the rear shock. I did that while I was at it. And uh, just like that, everything's back on. Here is our YSS shock, and I think it looks really cool with that reservoir. And I just like the red spring with the black and silver. Shock is actually very easy to install. Um, it's just one bolt here and another bolt up here. You can do this with the fairings on. Just make sure you have another set of hands. It'll make it that much easier. We put this back on from the other side. Make sure we get our cable grounded back on this bolt and our clutch cable situated. I forgot to mention when you remove your emissions, disconnect this from your fuel line. That gives you a lot of problems. This hose right here too. These two hoses right here, we don't need them. All of this will go. This canister, wiggle it out, take it out, it'll come off. Here, um, you can buy an EGR plate, but I won't buy one. I'm just gonna cut mine here or something and then I'm gonna crimp it down and then uh, weld it and it will be shut. Here's my EGR a tube, whatever you wanna call it. Um, actually, I, all I did is cut mine I did not even weld it and I just crimped it with the vice grip pretty damn good and it works. Instead of using these huge plastic derpy looking mirrors, I'm going to be using these. They look really cool. Alright, let's install our exhaust. The exhaust is mostly on. I'm just going to heat the header so I can um, make space so I won't be touching the frame. Heat it up and then you can bend the header and uh, you know shape it a little bit. Here's the exhaust installed. I uh, heated up the header with the torch and I was able to bend it a little bit and it clears now. It's hard to see but it clears the frame now. Um, and this is the way I made the you know this to hold the muffler. I had this piece already which it's kind of angled a little bit, which was perfect for this. I had a hole here and a hole here. I just used the big washer that I had here, put the bolt through, and I'm gonna turn this bolt around. But um, that's how I'm holding my muffler. You may have to come up with your own way to hold it, but I think what I'm gonna do is paint this washer and this black so it can, you know, go with the bike a little bit, a little bit better. I will use flat black because this is not gloss. And a lot better. All right, here's our chain. Just put it on. Um, with the 17 tooth, I ended up with, I think, 109 links. And this is 
how loose it is. So I think if you buy a 110 link, you will be fine. You will just have to tighten it quite a bit. I had to cut mine because Pro Taper ships these out with more than 110. These come with 134. So I took quite a few off and I think 109 was a sweet spot. Since I'm using a bigger sprocket, this will no longer fit. I will need to cut the bottom because the chain will be touching here. So I'm going to use a Dremel and cut off about to here. Just get rid of all of this and then put it back on. And that is what we were trying to do. We achieved it. As you can see where it cuts off all the way up here, it'll be grinding on this chain. So it's perfect now. Easy peasy. It is not recommended. It is a must for you to do that if you're getting a bigger front sprocket. Use a 17 millimeter socket to loosen it up. I already loosened mine. Eight hundred milliliters of oil. All right, just put one gallon of fuel. I recommend you use ninety-one or ninety-three. That's what this engine calls for. And also, I recommend you change your fuel lines. The stock fuel lines aren't very good. Also, you should get an inline fuel valve to close your fuel if you're gonna do any work or if you're not gonna use it for a long time. I personally use the fuel line from Go Power Sports, ten feet. Um, I just need to get an inline. Uh, shut off so I will do that later but yeah okay here's the plate that you can buy to put as your third engine mount um, you can get this plate from bike builder bear um, on Facebook or I'll link his YouTube channel so get a hold of him he'll sell these um, I think $20 plus shipping um, but all you do is bolt it up these four holes bolt up to those four holes up here on a pit bike this would be used as your foot pegs but on these motor motorcycles are kind of you know not used and then the end of the plate would go here just take the paint off of there and weld it so it would go up there just like that and then the end would weld right there this third engine mount is very recommended very very recommended motorcycle is done and ready to go um, my brother and a friend took it around town a couple times I took it around the block so um, <clears throat> so I'm going to ride I'm gonna have to practice how to use this a little bit since I'm not you know all that good at riding motorcycles but let's go for a little ride this is how you turn on a carburetor motorcycle without the lever you know you just Hold the throttle in a little bit, keep it at 2k RPMs for, I don't know, 30 seconds. And then, you know, until the bike stays on its own. Please excuse my dog.
last time I rode a motorcycle was not tuned at all my carburetor is not tuned all I do is I adjust the idle to be at 1500 RPMs or so should but yeah that's the ride i think it's good i don't have a license yet <laughs> i'm working on that but yeah uh it is not bad for a little 125 to go to work and you know mess around with <sighs> yeah i need to take that tag off of the pro paper yeah I know that my gauge is wrong and that's to be expected especially because I put a 17 tooth front sprocket on here so I know that my speed is wrong depending on what speeds I'm off by 2 to 5 miles per hour um, maybe 10 miles per hour um, at higher speeds so I definitely don't have 17 miles on this but it will rack up more miles than you actually are doing because of that so I'm going to adjust the speed probably using a speed ODR D. I think model C1 is the one we need but I'll figure it out later um, I don't want to change this whole thing for a new one but you know I'll just use that but for now that's how I'm gonna be running it that is it for this video um, I know I didn't um, show every single thing that I did but things like this you know you can figure it out the cable on this kind of self-explanatory I'm going to be doing, you know, like I said, the front and rear axles and the front and rear bearings and on oh, the cush drives soon. Um, when I do, after my first oil change, not the braking oil change, but the first oil change. So that will be very soon. So I go, I hope you guys enjoyed. So um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. <laughs>